Hey everybody, my name is Jerry and I'm glad you can join me. Today we're talking about the 2017, 18, and 19 Suzuki GSX-R 1000R and the ABS. We're taking those crummy uh, rubber brake lines and upgrading to a racing brake line system, stainless steel braided brakes, we're putting out a Brembo master cylinder. So if you haven't watched part one and part two, I suggest you go back and watch those first before you watch this one. I want to give an absolute shout out to Andrea Inanoni right here in Texas just this past weekend, guys. He got on the podium. I tell you what, guys, Suzuki is back, and they're back big. They're winning championships around the world. They're taking podiums at MotoGP. It just keeps getting better and better for Suzuki, guys. I'm really stoked, and I'm fired up. We're going to have to make some tough decisions in this video. Are we going to keep the ABS pump? Are we going to remove it? Stuff like that's going to go on. Definitely, hopefully, get rid of the last of the rubber lines, get them removed off the bike. We'll just see far, how far we're going to get in this video. You know, uh, one more thing is, how are we going to trick that computer into thinking everything's okay with the ABS pump? We're definitely going to do that in this video right here. Part 3 is coming up right now. Right, so now disconnecting the, I believe this is the rear brake side. 12 millimeter guys, it took a socket, right? Took a socket, socket to this one. Okay. Bump, bump, it's already loose. Okay, and then on this one, I had to get a wrench on it because it's sideways, right? Couldn't really fit a sock, uh, socket down, or even a short, a shorty I couldn't fit in there. So all you know, I just took a wrench, right? Got it down in there and busted a little. And um, you know, draining the brake lines uh, paid off because I, I haven't really got any drips here at all. I stuck my finger down there at the bottom, and you know. There's like almost no brake fluid here, like very, very tiny amount. So, so draining the brake lines definitely paid off, right? Yeah, drain them really good because it sucked the brake fluid pretty much out of the pump. There might be some small amount of residual, you know, hanging around when I pull the fittings off and I'm just going to have a rag ready to roll, right? Okay, so let me get, get rolling on this and we'll, we'll see where we're at in a little bit here. So you can see, get the first one off. Right, they came from over here. Next thing is gonna clip that little uh, zip tie right down there. See that little zip tie right there? See if I get the camera to focus on it. Yep, I'm gonna clip that off. And for sure these two lines do go down to the, to the rear brake, I already confirmed that. Okay, that's the one, one of them that's going up, going up to the, uh, you can see you can see it right there too. And here's the other one. Okay, that's one going up to it, and that's the other one going up to it. So one, one's the send, and one's the return, but it doesn't really matter, right? Okay. So now I'm gonna unbolt this right here. Okay, so I just um, took off this brake line, and that's the rear brake cal. Uh, sorry, rear brake master cylinder right there. And I'm just making a note even for myself. That's one of the great things, guys, about running video when you're doing um, installations or taking parts off. You can go back and look at the video yourself and see, see what was going on. I was just making a note for myself that on top of the rear brake cylinder is a washer. So then I route the new stainless steel brake lines, make sure to put the washer on top of the master cylinder first before you just screw the banjo bolt in there. And then for the banjo bolt, which is the same length as the other ones, thank God, so I don't have to get them confused. There's a washer on the banjo bolt right by the head. So... The order is washer goes on banjo bolt near the head, goes through the brake line banjo hole, I guess they're calling it that, and then the banjo end sits on top of a, the washer that's on top of the master cylinder. So that's the order. Boom, and then that on top of that. See that, guys, how you do that? I mean, if you're a motorcycle technician, you're doing this stuff all the time, this is second nature to you. Okay, I don't do this that often, so I'm just making sure I got a video chronicle of what exactly is going on here when I go to put it back together. I got it, right? Okay. So you'll see that the brake line is already moved off of there, right? It just routed up underneath there. Remember the zip tie earlier? I cut the zip tie, and look, it's coming right up. There it is. There's the first one out. Of course, it's one of the easier, easier ones. Hey, look, guys. Um... I went the path path of least res, least resistance, so I could feel good about. Hey, I got one brake line out! Yay! Uh, the easiest line to get out, right? Might as well start there. <laughs> okay. 
So next is going to be taking this one out. This one's going to be a little bit harder because it goes to a union down down there. So i got to spend a little time figuring out where uh, I noticed there's a little bolt. And let's see if we can find it. Okay. So that's the union right there. First time you guys got a good look at it, right? That's the union. You see that little hole there? That's a threaded hole. Initially, I thought they put a uh, internal hex bolt up in, up in there, but it's not. They went from the other side down. So, um, I spotted the bolt. I got to see if I can get a wrench on it. Oh, yeah, there's a great view of it. There you go, guys. That's the union right there, that block. Okay. Okay. So, even though this little flaps in the way, on the far side over here, that line there comes up to this far side and connects to that far side over there. And then, there's another brake line, which is really hard to see. Yeah, you can just see it right there. See it? Right there. So, two brake lines go into that union. Okay? And right now, all we're, do all we're doing is working that nut up there, or that bolt, right there. Just working it out, eight millimeter. And then the union's gonna drop drop away from the from its mounting. Okay guys, at this point I got the bolt, little bolt out. There it is, eight little eight millimeter bolt, okay? I'll obviously set that aside and put it in my little, little cup of goodies, okay? And, you know, there's a union, it's pretty easy. At this point you just pull the union straight back towards the back wheel. Let's see if it just pops out of there. Probably should. And there you go, guys. You can even see the brake brake line up there is moving around, right? Look at just the fact that I'm pulling on it. Okay. And there's there's the union right there. Right? There's the bolt hole. Okay. And it comes down. And I'm gonna I'm not gonna pull on too hard because I gotta I got some um, traction control wires going to the back, so you can see there's a clip there. And now I'm just gonna work my way back along this line there's some you can see there's um, a couple places i gotta undo some some mounts that hold the brake line and the traction control line together keep them all nice and tidy there's another one right there so obviously that banjo bolt right there is going to come out all right that one's coming out next all right and you can see there's a clip right there all right that one's got to come off of there so we have, I have the uh, banjo bolt out of the rear brake caliper, right? Okay. There's the hole. There's the banjo end. And this is the little clip. You can see it right there where it was, right? You can see that it was on the end of the brake line. That's all it looks like, right? It's pretty simple. You just pull it off. Okay, obviously the big end goes on the brake line and the small end holds the traction control wire. And you know, there's another one down there. You just you just do the same thing. You just work your way along the front, just like two or three of them there, you just pull them off. Okay, there it is. Um, from the last time I put the camera down to now, literally 60 seconds, guys, it was that easy to pull it out. Okay, and there's the union. All right, there's that little bugger. That's the end that was up by the ABS pump. This We're talking rear brakes only now right here, guys. There's a union. Now you understand why it's called a union, right? There's no connections. They're, they're welded right into this union, so you can't undo them. Okay, and there's the mounting hole. Union, it's all just hanging loose now, so should slowly be able to just pull this out of there. Let me go in the back here. Get my hand down in here. Okay, there's the other side of the banjo. Banjo there. Okay. And I just want to make sure I don't. I just want to make sure in this process I don't trip up with the with the traction control wire. Right, I got to be careful about the traction control wire. So get that off the brake pit, off this peg. Okay, just working it out, nice and slow here. Trying to keep the bike from getting scratched up. Okay. 
All right, we're almost out. All right. Here you go. That's the entire rear brake line right there. There you go, guys. Rear brake line's removed. Sweet, baby, sweet. Then we'll do the front. Right, just for clarity, when you take the rear brake lines out, you should have two lines. The little shorty one that goes down to the rear brake master cylinder, okay? And the long one, which goes from the master cylinder all the way back up to the pump, okay? You got it? You guys follow me? I'm sorry. This goes all the way back to the rear brake caliper. That little piece goes up to the pump, and there's your union. So anyway, when you take out your rear brake lines with the ABS... For the bikes that have ABS, right? You should have two brake lines. If you only have one, trust me, you got another one you haven't taken out yet, right? Follow me? Just for the rear alone, two brake lines, okay. Wanted to show you guys on the rear brake line. Sorry about the mess on that. This is the rear brake line with the Union. Right, starts there, goes the Union, comes over. Bing, bing. Anyway, I'm showing you this, this part mounts on the swing arm. You see that hole right there mounts up to the swing arm. Well, remember earlier, I was like, what the heck is this extra bolt for on there? So it's a, what it ends up being is a two-piece bracket. I already loosened it up a little bit. You see it? And uh, I don't want to get into Suzuki's case here, but I'm positive I could have made a better, a better design than this, but whatever. Don't want to criticize Suzuki. They know what they're doing. Make an awesome motorcycle, no doubt. But in this case, I think this bracket could have been a little bit better designed, but that's all right. So... Um, two-piece bracket okay take it off All right and yeah I could probably reuse this on the stainless steel braided brake lines to mount up to the swing arm problem is your brake line would need to have that on it which yeah looks like maybe it comes off All right, let me see if I can zoom in because this is hard. I got, I, got, I got a camera in one hand and a flashlight in the other, guys. So this is pretty, pretty trick going on here. Let's see, I'm going to show you something. Because if we're doing this together, right, guys? Because I don't even know myself right now. If I can get, get the camera to focus on. Ah, yeah. Okay, that's going to work. Let me get a screwdriver. And I'll point to what I'm talking about. A long screwdriver. You know, I was listening to uh, one of my subscribers, Trevor. If you guys want to check out his YouTube channel, he just he just put up a video recently. And um, I don't know how long he's had the, the YouTube channel, but he doesn't have, but I don't know, you know, a few subscribers. So, Trevor, you got to grow your channel, man. But um, his British accent was just cracking me up. You know, I was, I was uh, trying to mimic the British accent, not doing very well. So, uh, Trevor, keep up, keep up the good work, brother. Hope your back's feeling better. All right, you guys see what I'm pointing at right there? That little piece right there? That little thing right there is preventing the handle from pulling off. And it prevents... What we're looking at here, guys, is the, uh, the harness that plugs into the ABS pump. Okay? So that little tab right there is going to be pushed in. Then you can pull back the handle. Okay? So I wanted to show you that because, you know... You might be getting all frustrated trying to pull that thing off, and, and I'm thinking that's probably what I'm going to have to do first. So there's the wiring harness. Face up. Got to be kind of gentle with it because there's some, another wire that runs along. Right, right here. So don't pull on too hard. But some of you might be saying, wait a minute. Now just wait a minute. Didn't he mention something in a bag? What was that part? Well, it's obvious now, ain't it, boys? That's right. The part in the bag. The mystery part. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Will it trick the computer? Uh, and does FTECU know what they're doing? Well, yeah, they do, because they've made plenty of these for plenty of bikes over the years. So um, we're gonna, before we go any further with this build, we're gonna plug this bad boy in there. 
and we're going to turn the bike on and make sure we don't get any errors. Otherwise, uh, otherwise we got to stop what we're doing because, you know, before I pull that pump out of there, I want to make sure this thing actually works, right? All right, so I'm going to figure out which way this thing goes. I think it goes this way. Looks like this clip goes on this side. I'm not 100% sure yet, but I think it does. And remember, you're going to want up that wiring harness arm to probably be fully up like that, right? Okay, guys, you can see the modules in there. This is the flash tune ECU, also known as FTECU.com. Okay, this is the the um, the ABS delete that plugs right into the harness. Okay, so I'm just going to temporarily put the battery back in, hook up the battery, and then we'll fire up the bike and see where we're at. Uh, as far as the dashboard, do we get any errors and all that? Okay, so that's what I'm gonna do now. Okay, guys, the battery's temporarily put back in. I just snugged them up a little bit. I didn't really go crazy tight, just enough to make sure we got good connection, right? Okay, we got the key in the ignition here, and um, let's see what we get. I do see a red light over there, but let's see what happens when I start it. Any errors on the dashboards, guys? Looking really good. Sweet baby sweet. No errors here. I love it. Okay, now that we got confirmation that the that Flash Tunes ABS Delete module is working really good, a big sigh of relief, right? Because <laughs> that's that's a very important moment right there, guys. It worked really good. Okay. So next, I'm going to take the battery back out, get it out of the way. Then we're going to start working on taking these two lines off. Got the two lines disconnected from the pump. <laughs> One of these little banjo washers. All right? One of these little guys right here. Fell down right in there, right, right in there. My first snafu, you know. I mean, I've been being really careful and meticulous, and I pulled this this one off right here, right? And it, it stuck to the bottom of the banjo, the banjo in, and, and I heard it go clank, clank down in there. I'm like, oh, great. Anyway, I managed to extract it with the screwdriver, so thank God for that. Okay, guys, just wanted to show you now. We're talking about the two brake lines um, that came off on this side, the front, right? This one and this one are off. Yeah, obviously you can see one's right there, right, and the other one's right there. Now they run along the frame. They go underneath to the left of the gas tank, right, and they run on the frame, right on the frame rail, right up on the frame rail, all the way to the front. Those are steel lines. We don't really care about those. We don't. We don't have to. We're not trying to remove those. Okay, we're just trying to remove these that are right up here by the pump. Okay. Obviously, we've already gotten the rear brake lines out. We showed you that earlier. Okay. So underneath one of the brake lines, okay, is actually a 10 millimeter nut, okay? And remember I showed you these wrenches earlier, they're, they're really good for brake, for working on brake lines, where most, you know, like a three quarters of the wrench goes around the brake line and then you push it up onto the nut, right? Well, that's what I did here. Okay, I already broke it free. I'm just showing you. What I did is I grabbed the, the brake line and lifted it up because it has a little play here okay you grab it and you lift it up then you just put in the end of the wrench over the brake line can you see I don't know if you guys can see the brake line there it's kind of you see look at the flashlight to work with us here you see the brake line down there the green brake line kind of that green olive looking color so that's how you slide the wrench over the brake line and then slide it up onto the nut okay you can see the nut right there right just underneath the wrench then you work it obviously lefty loosey right and bust it free and it was hard it was on there really good but uh i just put on a pair of gloves because you know when you're this close to working there sharp stuff i recommend wearing a pair of gloves so i wore my gloves right here because you don't want any knuckle busters because when i broke this free sure enough my hand hit some stuff over here you know so you put some gloves on when you're about to bust it free so anyway this is loose 
as you can see right now, this, uh, let's see if I get my hand holding the camera the one way for you here. You can see this is loose. See, it's all loose. Okay, cool. So I can just now take the wrench off of there and do the rest by hand and get this um, part of the uh, brake uh, line out of the way. Okay, so you can see that that is now off. There it is right there. Okay. Pretty simple stuff. I'm just going to leave it like that. I don't have any worries if, you know, that nut is, that uh, screwing nut is floating a little bit. Okay. So maybe I'll secure it a little bit with some tape just so it doesn't float around under hard writing. I might just put some tape around this so it doesn't move. Um, I didn't really get any brake fluid at all here. Didn't detect any brake fluid at all in that line. So once again, draining the brake lines obviously before we get going is a smart way to go. See that guys right there? I just push on it with my hand. Right, you can already see it's most of the way out, right? I just push on the rubber with my hand in that direction. So it's almost out, it's right on the edge. So just push out that wire loom, the rubber off uh, the wire loom, and that's what it looks like when you when you get most of it out, okay? Let's see if I get this focus. Okay, that's the eight millimeter nut right there. Bolt, I should say, right here. I already busted it loose with the eight millimeter wrench. Okay, so that's the next thing you're gonna do. Okay, at this, this point, guys, you can see that I've got the wrench on there on the back, okay? And you can see the type of wrench it is, right? It's that brake flare type wrench. Goes over the brake line, okay? I know you can't see behind it, but that's the best shot I can get from where I'm at. So I just got done watching MotoGP. Austin, Texas, baby, yeah! And I wanna give a shout out to uh, Andre Iannone. Suzuki on the podium again, guys. That's two weeks in a row or two races in a row. They did it down in Argentina, Alex Renz. This time it was Andre Iannone. Suzuki is legit, guys. They're getting on the podiums. I'm loving it. Um, hats off, of course, to Mark Marquez. It'd be totally dominates Texas as usual. Hats off to him. I don't like his behavior on the track sometimes, but I'm still going to give him correct congratulations for winning the race. And, uh, you know, respect to him for carrying around Nikki Hayden's flag at the end of the race. I thought that was pretty cool. Very respectful. Um, anyway, back to this. Um, what I had to do, guys, is I had to actually take that side bolt out, remove the union from the bracket, put the brake wrench on there, okay, which I showed you, right? Put that on there. Other side, sorry, 10 millimeter. Put it on there. Okay, behind all that. Once I got it wiggled down there over the brake line and up, up it snug, snug up against the nut, actually I had it like this. Okay, then I had to actually remount the union and screw it back into the bracket, so like so that I could then take this and bust it loose. I couldn't bust it loose with it with it separated from the bracket. I just couldn't get good leverage. Okay, so that's what I did. So now the nut behind this behind this union is loose. Okay. Which you could just do it by hand or just keep working the wrench. Okay, and then take that out and should be good to go. All right, that's what it looks like once you got it off. Okay. You guys can now see it, right? You can see that, that nut right there, right? That kind of flare style nut. Same as, same as up top. Okay. And there's the line right there. That's the union that was on the up there underneath the bike like that, right? That's the side mount, and that's where the union was bolted into with the brake line going back to the ABS pump. And look at this, guys. I want to show you something here. This bike's been sitting here for a couple days because I've been working on it off and on. Remember I stuck the rag in there? Look at that rag. The paper towel, shop towel. Look at it. Soaked with brake fluid. Now, um, that was hanging here this whole time, right? It was hanging down right here. Now imagine if that little paper towel was in there, it'd be dripping on your fork, dripping on the floor. Okay, so now you know why I do that. Look at that, saturated with brake fluid. Because this line is going to slowly drain with residual brake fluid that's stuck to the inside of the walls. It's going to slowly drip. So that's why you do that, okay? Do yourself a favor, stick a little paper, shop paper towel in there while you're working on the bike and you won't have to worry about cleaning up any mess. Okay, so now we've got... We've added to our collection of rubber brake lines. Okay, you can see I got the gas tank up, and the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove that brake line right there. Okay. 
And that brake line's left over, came up to the master cylinder, right? Still sitting up here on the top of the bike. Okay, you can see it right there. I already got it loose, I'm just showing you. So you can see where that is mounted to the frame of the bike, right? It's already loose, I'm just gonna do the rest by hand. Okay, there's another bolt that holds the wire loom on. You can see it right there. Now at this point you want to be really cognizant of where, what's running through this bracket, this wire loom. Okay, so now you can see I got the wire loom off of there. You can see the little bracket hole right there. There's one down there somewhere, you can't quite see it in this frame. Okay, and our flare nut's back inside there a little bit. Okay, there's the wire loom, a wire bracket, which we're gonna put back on once we get this, this brake line disconnected. And this one's a little bit of a bugger. Um, I've already kind of looked at this and I put my hand on this with, and pulled it towards me really hard and it looks like I'll be able to get, just barely get a wrench on the flare down on the other side and get it disconnected. Okay, at this point guys, I've got both wrenches on there and it looks kind of messy. The one on the right instead of a crescent wrench is 16 millimeters. I didn't have one. I hate using a crescent wrench, but it's the only thing I had that would fit in there. You can see I've got the bike protected here, nice and careful like. On the left here is a brake line style wrench, and that's 10 millimeter. On the right would be 16 millimeter to fit the other, to fit the other nut. Okay, All right. And again, you gotta pull that brake line towards the front of the bike and get it pulled out far enough to get that 10 millimeter on there. Okay, that's what it looks like when it's off. So now, I'll put the wire loom back on there. Two bolts. Put the wire loom back on there, make sure I got the, uh, the wires routed underneath the wire loom properly. Okay, and our brake rubber brake line count <laughs> is going up. <laughs> okay, you can see I got the wire loom wire bracket put back in place okay and you want to check to make sure guys that that your wires there aren't crimped up and right make sure you're not pinching anything they want to be held in place held in place up against the frame but you don't want to be pinching them so, so check by turning your handlebars left and right okay i'm not doing it right now because i got a flashlight hanging here all right at this point guys i got all the rubber brake lines on this bike removed except for one this one right here and you don't understand how Suzuki could have screwed the pooch on this one. I mean, it's the only one where they don't have a flare nut on it. So check it out, guys. This is the one I took off from the front of the motorcycle, right? That was the one that was down in, down in here. Remember that? I took it off. It was rotted down underneath there. So Suzuki explained to me why it is you don't have a flare nut on the bottom of this rubber grommet, the one that's right there. Explain it to me. Now at this point, if I could, I tell you what, if, if I could have removed this line with the flare nut, if they had had it mounted down there properly, I just remove this flare, this line and keep this pump sitting right there. And just get stainless steel, little tiny shorty stainless steel bolts, right? That would bottom out into this, put the, put the, um, the uh, banjo washer back on here. Put some threaded tape on the stainless steel bolts. Just thread them in here. One, two, three, four, and be done with it. We already know this works. We have all the rubber be, would be removed to be ready to roll. So I don't really want to cut this because, you know, I don't want to do that in case somebody wants to buy the bike. And I have all the hoses that I could get back to stock if they wanted to. Right? So, hmm. I have to make a decision here on how to do this. I, I may just put this back into its wire loom back down in there and reconnect it to its wire loom. And then just push this brake line down in there and let it sit there. Because, you know, it's drained. There ain't nothing going on here. There's no brake fluid anymore coming out of that bad boy. Push this back down there in, into its little spot where it's going to fit. Put the battery back in. And next thing all I gotta do is run my new, new stainless steel braided brake lines everywhere. Okay. And for those of you that are wondering, well, 
What about this one right here? Yeah, it could be replaced. If you really want to replace that one, you can. And that's fine. But just remember when you push your brake pedal, I'm not sure sure that one's swelling. It, it, maybe it is, but I don't think it is. What's happening is the brake fluid's being pushed down through the cylinder, and the pressure's gonna be on the stainless steel line that goes back to the rear brake, not this hose here. This hose actually would be sealed off during your braking. But for the sake of being consistent, probably a good idea to replace this rubber hose here too. All right, so the more I think about this, guys, I think I'm gonna keep the pump right there. I think I'm gonna put this rubber one back into its wiring harness down there, its wire loom down there, and I'm just gonna push it down in there. Might, I might even just use a little zip tie to hold it down there somewhere, okay? And have at it and do the installation. Be, be rocking and rolling with some stainless steel braided brake lines. I think that's the route I'm gonna go here, guys. Because everything else is looking really good here. That was pretty cool, right? Got all the rubber hoses off the bike, and this thing is looking really good. From here on out, it's putting stuff on instead of taking stuff off. You all wanna give a quick shout out to Andrea Iannone, who got on the podium for Suzuki this week. Right here in Texas, an awesome baby at uh, COTA. What a great weekend, man. I tell you, Suzuki keeps getting on the podium, guys. They got on the podium down there in Argentina. And they did it again here in America. I think Suzuki's, man, they're looking really good, guys. I mean, seriously, they're getting on the podium. They're winning championships. Suzuki is back, baby. Yeah, Suzuki is back. Listen, guys, you know, I really thought very carefully about taking the ABS pump out. But I may end up selling this bike eventually, and if I do, they're probably going to buy the bike and want the ABS pump in there. So I don't want to have to go through the whole thing putting it back in there. Um, so I think I'm just going to keep the pump in there. I've got all the rubber hoses off the bike except for one, where I don't know what Suzuki was thinking on that one. I think they had a brain fart when they didn't put a flare dot on that last rubber hose. I don't know what they're thinking there. But no big deal. Uh, all the brake fluids out of all those lines, so I can either rehook it up to the pump or just you know zip tight to something underneath there, and it shouldn't be a problem. So this is looking really good, guys. We're going to put some racing stainless steel brake, brake lines on this bike, get the Brimble Master Cylinder installed, and we're going to have a great time this summer riding the bike and going out there and having a blast. This summer, I'm also pretty sure I'm going to be installing a full exhaust system with um, a brand new map for the, uh, the mapping for the fuel. So we're going to take advantage of that full exhaust. Um, and some other go-fast parts are going to go on this bike. We're going to take this bike from about 163 uh, rear wheel horsepower and get up to about 192 rear wheel horsepower. This thing's going to be a serious, serious beast by the time I get done with it. And um, maybe later in the summer, we'll see if I have a chance to do it. I'm going to start talking to you guys about how to set up the suspension on this bike because you got to remember, this is the double R and it's got the upgraded suspension. So hopefully I'll get a chance to get into that and show you guys how do we adjust the suspension and things like setting up the sag and like that are all very, very important when you're going to take your bike out and do some hard riding especially your track days are racing. So everything's looks really good from here, guys. I'm loving it. Listen, guys, if you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel, go ahead and click that Texas flag right there. You'll see over my head here is a playlist of all the videos on this awesome 2017 Suzuki GSX-R 1000R. And there's two free short films that we've done, guys. If you haven't watched them yet, go over there and watch them and enjoy them. Until next time, guys, we'll see you right back here again real soon.